Hey guys, welcome back to Fun and Gun. In today's video, we're going to be going over ammos for your CP33 and what I've tried and a few that I haven't tried and what works, what doesn't work. And let's go ahead and get into it real quick here. We got this set up into four categories here. We got your ammo that does not work in this gun, that works but has other issues that I have that does work quite well in this gun. Ammo that we're going to try today to find out together if it works in this particular gun. A little bit of suppressor use at the end here with these two particular ammos. Let's go ahead and get into here what I've tried that doesn't work, which is your 40 grain Remington Golden Bullets, which this gun does recommend using 40 grain high velocity rounds, but these particular ones do not work in this gun very well. We're gonna go over here to your arms core, 40 grain high velocity. These also do not perform very well in this gun. Let's see. We have your Winchester Super X 40 grain, which in my opinion these don't work pretty much in any semi-automatic gun worth a darn most of the time and that is because of the particular shape of the bullet being very flat let's see if i can get that in the shot there very flat on the tip and long these rounds drag in my experience on the inside of the mag body and don't allow the gun to cycle properly that also goes for your hertz here which is also loaded by winchester they're shaped about the same and I've had pretty well the same issues with them. You got your Aguila 40 grain, high velocity. This ammo, it works okay, but the amount of wax it has on it jams up the magazines pretty quickly, so I don't recommend it. And you're gonna get into your Winchester M22, which surprisingly to me, this actually cycles quite well. But the reason that I put it here instead of in the working ammo is because this ammo has a very high amount in my opinion of dud rounds in the first 500 rounds fired in this i got 26 dud rounds and to me that's that's pretty bad so after this brick's gone i probably won't be buying any more of that unless it's a really good deal i want to get over here into the stuff that does work which would be your 40 grain mini mag target which i mean if your gun doesn't run mini mags i mean you probably don't need it in the first place so we got that and we're gonna go over here to your CCI standard velocity. These are a 40 grain round. They also work pretty good in this gun. Okay, we're gonna save this for last. These are my favorite. We're gonna go over here to your Federal Auto Match. These are a 40 grain round. It actually works pretty good in this gun. It's probably my second favorite round. You get a few jams with it, but not quite as bad as anything over here or over here. So we're gonna go to one that I was kind of surprised about, which is the Aguila 38 grain hollow points. These have actually performed quite well in this gun. And then another one I was pretty surprised about, which I was really expecting the high velocity 40 grains to work better in this particular gun, but I've actually found that uh, the 40 grain um, standard velocity arms core rounds actually cycle quite well in this gun. And then we're gonna go to my favorite here, which is the Remington Thunderbolt. A lot of people hate on this round because it, it can be pretty dirty, but this, as you'll see in a minute, this is the ammo that this gun actually, my particular gun, really likes and has cycled almost 100% on. I'm not gonna say 100% because nothing's 100% with 22. And then we got something I picked up just for this video, which is the Blazer. This is a 38 grain, high velocity round. I'd like to see if these work in there. You can pick these up pretty easily these days, so I'd like to know if that works. Then we got some Gym Tech Suppressor. This is a... Um, not sure what the grain on this is. Doesn't say on the box, but usually your suppressor ammo is gonna have a heavier grain bullet to help it cycle. So we'll see if those work. Then we got our 45 grain Winchester. I mean, not Winchester, Federal American Eagle suppressor. And we're gonna try those and see if they'll run the, with the suppressor. And let's go ahead and get into this and see what works, what doesn't work. And we'll go from okay, there. Guys, we're gonna go ahead and start off here with our 38 grain Blazer high velocity ammo. I originally had pretty high hopes for this, but after messing with it a little bit off camera and just trying to get this into the magazine in general, not something I would recommend even if it does run from the mag I just loaded. I mean, this was all done using the speed loader here and it took me 15 probably minutes at least to get these rounds in here. And I believe there's at least 30 rounds in the mag here. Go ahead and see if it'll run them. Yep. Got a 
the first jam here. See if we can get it to loosen the tree up here. As you can see there, it's done rim locked. And I'm not even gonna bother. I've been messing with this for a few minutes now off camera trying to get this to work. And I'll show you why I think it's rim locking. I believe it's the shape of the bullet that's allowing you to do this, being a 38 grain. But we'll go ahead and go over that at the end of the video. For time's sakes, we're not gonna just sit here and struggle with this round. Yep, same thing. So even after you get to unjam there, like I just did, fired that one round and jammed again. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. Okay, to next up is gonna be your CCI standard velocity. This is a 40 grain bullet. And uh, I'm only gonna run 15 rounds of this because I have ran quite a bit of this. I know it works quite well and I don't have a whole lot of it on hand. So that's just what we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and run that and show you that it does work. CCI standard velocity, velocity ran 100% there. Okay, guys, next up we got your 40 grain CCI mini mags. We're going to shoot 15 rounds of these because I don't have a whole lot of them on hand. And for time's sake, and then when we get to the ammo, I have more on hand. I shoot more often. We'll go ahead and put 50 round mags through it. So we're going to show you here. Picked up the first round just fine. Let's go ahead and shoot this. Mini Max flawless. Okay, next up we got our arms core 40 grain standard velocity. You don't see the arms core stuff quite as much, but I picked some up at a gun show and it actually works quite well in this gun. So let me go ahead and show you. We got 50 rounds loaded up here. I'll show you. Picks up the first round just fine. Let's go ahead and run through these rounds real quick. Fifty grain or forty grain arms core, flaws fifty rounds. Move on to the next. Okay, next up we got our Agila thirty eight grain hollow point high velocity ammo. I was actually kind of surprised about this one. I was thinking the super extra forty grain would have ran better, but in my experience, the hollow point thirty eight grain actually works quite a bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and run fifty rounds of this and pick up the first round without a problem. Let's go ahead and run it. Here. Okay, we had one jam there and feature round still pretty good. I would recommend the Aguila. If you can find you some at a good deal, let's move on to something else. Okay, guys, next up we got our 40 grain Federal Auto Match. It's probably my second favorite ammo for this particular gun. We're gonna go ahead and shoot 50 rounds of it. Get the gun here and I'm gonna show you. Pick up the first round without a problem. Let's go ahead and shoot it. Okay, 100 round or 
50 rounds, 100% of the Federal Automites there. We're going to go ahead and move on to another one. Okay, guys, next up, we got another 40 grain high velocity. This is Remington Thunderbolt. This has become a go to for this gun. And we're going to go ahead and run 50 rounds through it. Let's see it here. Picked up the first round just fine. Okay, guys, next up is going to be your Winchester 40 grain M22 high velocity. Now, this round usually cycles pretty good in the gun, but I'm not going to recommend it because in the first 500 rounds in multiple of my guns, I've got dud rounds that just wouldn't go off with multiple strikes. So if we can get through this 50 rounds without a dud round, I'll be pretty surprised. So let's go ahead and shoot what we got here. Okay, guys. That was an add a battery discharge with the Winchester M22. And uh, well, that's enough for me. We're not even going to fire the rest of these rounds. And I ain't going to be buying no more of this okay, guys. Next up, we got your Gym Tech Suppressor 22, 42 grain. Not sure if this is going to work. I haven't tried it yet. Don't shoot this gun and suppress a whole lot. Being a cheap pistol, you get gas in the face a lot. and. Well, this gun, once you shoot it suppressed a few times, the mag usually gets dirty and doesn't run very good, but we've got about 15 or so rounds here. We're gonna see if it'll cycle suppressed. Uh, Gym Tech 22 bullets actually work pretty good in this gun with the suppressor. It's actually pretty fun. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, guys, next we got your uh, Federal 45 grain suppressor. Haven't tried this in this gun yet either. We're gonna see if this will work. Chambered the first round without a problem. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. That was 15 rounds of federal and suppression that ran flawless as well. As you can see, it makes the magazine very dirty. That's why I chose to do this last. I don't shoot this suppress a whole lot. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and do a few uh, final thoughts here on why some of these rounds work, why I feel like some of them don't work, and then a few of them that I just wouldn't buy in general for any use. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the ones that do work. We're gonna bring in your CCI standard velocity here. And as you can see, this particular round, let's see if we can get it close enough to the camera, you can see that. Has a more of a broad rounded head, not just really pointy. As some of these other rounds are more of a pointed head than a broad head. And I found that the gun really likes this shape of bullet. And the reason I feel that it likes these is because the round doesn't allow, let me grab the magazine here. They're long enough to fill all the space up in front of your fall, I mean your, your feed ramp here, but not too long that they drag on the face of, or the inside of your body here. And they're also, a large enough diameter at the tip of the bullet that doesn't allow the rounds to move up and down in your magazine and get rim lock like I was having with the uh, the blazer here. Let's go ahead and 
take that round back out of the mag. When I was putting these rounds in the magazine, there's a lot of space in front of this bullet in the mag. There's like a little bit of a gap in between the tip of the bullet and you're actually the front of your mag body here and the overall tip of the round itself is actually a little more pointed and smaller diameter and it lets that round kind of move around up and down in the body of the magazine and that's when I was trying to load this mag I noticed that I was getting a lot of um, rim locks and having problems loading them and when you'd push down on the top round it would actually go ahead and just rim lock the one under it because it had enough space to move around to allow it to do that so kind of disappointed in the auto I mean the uh, blazer here really expected that to be a good running round in this gun seeing as all the CCI that works in it that I've tried so far but uh, either way I mean not gonna run everything but see let's go ahead and grab a few other rounds here right here we got your federal auto match we're gonna go ahead and say that your federal auto match right here next to your CCI standard velocity these bullets are almost identical in shape they both have the same shape top of the round they're almost the exact same height so that's a well I feel like these auto match also run well in this gun they don't they fit in the magazine properly they're gonna move over here to your Remington go or Thunderbolt which is one of my favorites and still got our CCI standard velocity here for comparison now your Thunderbolt is a little more pointed than your um, standard velocity here but let's see if you can see that let's see if I can get that in the camera here okay so now that we showed you that there now these rounds even with the slightly more pointed bullet have been nearly 100% reliable in this gun for me I'm not going to say 100% because nothing's 100% but I can't remember having any jams with them yet in the first 500 round brick of this I've shot and to me that's pretty good so that's why this is my my recommendation my go-to so we're gonna go ahead and set that back off of the side and we're gonna pull one out here that kind of surprised me a little bit because it is a 38 grain not a 40 grain and the actual shape of the bullet it is not exactly the same as the others here that I've showed that actually run well in this gun. It's got more of a flat tipped hollow point and the actual tip of the round is a little more rounded, but the fact that the actual round farther down is still thick enough to prevent it from moving around in the magazine. As you'll see, I get one jam with these out of a 50 round run. And to me, that that's pretty good. I mean, I ain't gonna say that obviously the Thunderbolt's my favorite, but those work pretty well if you can find some of them. We're gonna go over here to our CCI mini mag. It's the target 40 grain version. And once again, we got our CCI standard velocity here. Very similar or bullet shape here. I'll actually go ahead and pull my Thunderbolt back out here. This Thunderbolt and this mini mag are quite a bit closer in shape. They're both slightly pointed on the end, but they still have a broad enough head to keep them from moving up and down in the magazine causing rim lock and other issues so that these run well in the gun as well also and then we got some arms core this is standard velocity 40 grain we're also going to go ahead and compare this to our Remington Thunderbolt actually let's swap that back for let's see here where does standard velocity go and we'll compare it to an auto match here these two rounds as you can see you can see that in the shot these particular bullets are almost completely identical to each other to the fact that if i sit here and mix them up and don't look at the bottoms i can't actually tell you which one's which because like i said they're literally the same design bullet so that's these actually so they actually function well in the gun as well let me look here make sure i put them back with the right ones because like i said very hard to tell apart but those those arms cord have worked very well for me also and uh, okay now i was actually kind of surprised about the fact that this is the arms core this is a 36 grain i believe in the beginning of the video i call this a th uh, 40 grain but this is a 36 grain high velocity kind of figured out of the two that this one would be a uh, 
a better bet for running the gun being high velocity, but 36 grain just doesn't really give it enough energy into the bolt to cycle. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but these two bullets are almost the same shape, except for the 36 grain it has a hollow point and the tip's a little flatter than the, uh, the 40 grain here, standard velocity. So that actually probably also adds to a little bit of the reliability issues of your uh, 36 grain there. And uh, one that I was kind of surprised about that I'll probably do a little more testing with actually to see is your Aguila 40 grain Super Extra. This is a high velocity round. And let's see here, this round is almost identical to your Mini Mag here. Slightly less pointed on the end, but overall shape is almost identical. So I was kind of surprised that these did not work very well in the gun. Like I said, I'll probably mess with these a little bit more. And I'm thinking it might be due to the fact that most of your gill ammo has a lot of wax and creates dragging issues in the uh, magazine itself after shooting quite a few rounds. And now this is something I found out while filming the video or getting ready to film this portion of the video. This is a Remington a bucket of bullets that I put into little cases to make it easier to carry around. And this is actually what I tried in the gun. And for video purposes, I used this case because, well, obviously it looks better and did not realize that this is a 40 grain hard tip round or a, a round tip round. And these are actually 36 grain hollow points. Did not know there's two different versions of the golden bullets. So this is another round that I'll have to try to see if it'll actually work. These did not work well in the magazine itself. But as you can see, there actually is two different rounds there. Now that I know that, something I'll have to mess with later on. Because this round here, see here, let me get my Thunderbolt here. Looks pretty well exactly like a Thunderbolt. Except this has their uh, the goldish tint of, I'm not sure what they use on these to make it look gold. But the bullets themselves are literally identical. I'm not going to say that they are identical. They're the same round. Just one of them's coated. So I feel like if I'd actually tried this particular version of the golden bullet, it'd probably cycle pretty well as also. So let's go ahead and set those back off to the side. Now we're going to get into the stuff that, let's see, well, before we get into that, let's go ahead and show you a few rounds that I tried here that did work as well. This is your uh, Gym Tech, and it actually, I did find it on the box. I have my thumb over it in the beginning of the video. This is a 42 grain, and then you got your American Eagle. It's a 45 grain. These are both uh, suppressor specific rounds. And as you can see, your Gym Tech here has a very similar round shape to all the other rounds I've shown here. Here's the auto match to compare. Can't hardly see that on the camera really, but the Gym Tech did cycle properly with the suppressor. I didn't try without the suppressor, but I mean, it's suppressor ammo, so hey. Then you got your uh, American Eagle suppressor here. The American Eagle suppressor looks very similar to your CCI Mini Mag. So, wasn't really surprised that this one functioned properly in this gun. It has the same shape as most of all the other bullets that I've shown here that work well in this firearm. Let's go ahead and get those out of the way now. Like I said, I'm going to bring in a few rounds here. Ending with one that I just can't recommend for nothing. But we're going to go ahead and start with your Hertz here, which is loaded by Winchester. These shaped bullets, which is kind of a cone shape with a really broad flat tip do not work well in this gun in my experience they they drag on the inside of the magazine they're actually slightly longer than some of these other rounds but i've had bad luck out of these cycling in most any semi-automatic kind of just pick them up when they're a good deal and keep them around for shooting in revolvers and whatnot but We'll set that back off the side. We're going to go with our Super X, which is almost the same as the other round I just showed you there with the Hertz. It's actually just a little bit heavier grain bullet, but you get the same issues with the magazine with your Winchester as you do your Hertz there. And now for the one that I'm not going to recommend to nobody, your Winchester M22. 
and I've had not so much as reliability issues as of cycling, but as issues as you can see here with just the overall quality of the round. This is from the first 500 rounds I fired. This is all of the duds that I've pulled out of these. And you can see that one's got multiple strikes on different sides of the case. Let's see, I got some of these. This particular round here has four strikes on different sides of the case. And this is in different guns. It's not just using the Kel-Tec. I did use this in other guns and some of these particular bullets in multiple guns just to see if it was the Kel-Tec, but it was not. So I'm not gonna sit here and show you every one of these. Every one of these got multiple primer strikes and just would not go off. And to me, that's pretty garbage. In 500 rounds, you get a 5% failure rate. And not to mention, we got two cases here that didn't have powder in them at all. No bullets, no nothing. So that being said, and also as you'll see in the video itself, getting out of battery discharge and I didn't even bother to finish shooting the mag of this because I'm just really done with this. I'll struggle through it in a couple of revolvers or whatnot to get rid of the last 500, but not gonna be buying any more of that garbage. So, but yeah, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and finish up here and I'll show you, like I said, that basically you got your Remington, you got your Federal Auto Match, just grab a mini mag, and your arms core, 40 grain standard velocity. Let's see if we can get these up into the shot. All these rounds are very similar to each other. The only main difference is your obviously your mini mag here has a jacket on it, or it's copper wash jacket, whatever. It's not actually really a jacket, it's just kind of a wash, but these are the type of rounds that I found that work well in this gun. Even though it says it needs high velocity rounds, it really, in my opinion, just needs a good shape 40 grain round, seeing as your arms core standard velocity of cycles just fine. So really, when it comes to your CP33, it comes down to how the round itself fits in your magazine. There's your CCI standard velocity and how much space you end up with, with what particular round you have from your front side of your body. If there's a gap or not, which is a few of these rounds are slightly shorter and have a gap, or if it's gonna drag the front of the magazine body, you're gonna get feeding issues from my experience in the magazine itself, not so much the gun. But overall, if you're looking for something that runs really well in this gun, it ain't gonna just break the bank. Pick you up some Remington Thunderbolt. I've had good luck out of it so far and I'm gonna continue to buy this for this particular gun. And then if you can't find your Thunderbolt, you can get you some auto match. You're gonna have good results out of it as well. You may get a few jams every now and then, but nothing like you're gonna get with your Winchesters or any of that stuff over on that side there. So that's a good product as well. And if you can find you some Arms Core, you don't see this a whole lot. I picked this up at a gun show. And if you can find some of that, it actually has cycled well in this gun and a few of my other guns as well. And obviously if your gun doesn't shoot mini mags, you, you probably don't need it in the first place is what I've always been told. So you can find you some mini mags, not the most cost effective option, but that is an option. You get Gila here. This is the 38 grain, like I said, hollow points. This has worked quite well in this gun. And if you're shooting it suppressed, there's just some options for that. Or you could just, go with the cheaper option here and shoot you some standard velocity i mean let's be honest in a short barrel you're not going to probably notice that big of a difference anyways and the cost difference on these three rounds is going to be quite a bit haven't bought either one of these in a while but i know this is probably i would say half the price maybe not that much but quite a bit cheaper but overall i'm going to go ahead and close this video off and saying is if you find the right rounds to fit in your magazine correctly in your CP33 have the right velocity or the high velocity or well I guess not the high velocity the proper bullet shape your CP33 in my experience is they do they will run almost 100% reliable with the right ammo mag this is a 50 round mag here this is actually a Kel-Tec extension and 
I haven't done a whole lot of testing on these in 30 round or the 33 round configuration because almost right after I bought it, I put the extensions on it. I would assume they should still work fine. And I, I do feel like that putting this extension on here does help with the first round pickup on all, a lot of these rounds because you do use your factory spring still in there. So when you do that, you lose quite a bit of the tension on it, which hasn't seemed to cause any feeding issues, but it allows for the first round to pick up easier. Now this particular mag, I did notice after filming the video is broken on the bottom right here. My other one, as you'll see uh, in the review of the actual gun, is actually cracked down the side right here. So I'm gonna be sending those back to Keltec, hoping I can get them fixed. And we'll just see what they do about that. Well, that's uh, all I gotta say. And uh, hopefully you can get your CP33 running quite well like I have and have fun shooting. See?